Hey, it's Matt here with a very interesting interview question from Goldman Sachs, and I'm going to show you how to solve it in Python. This question is a good example of a large family of data science interview questions that concern optimization. I will show you how the cumulative sum operator can be used to solve such questions. Let's get into it. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest interview questions and useful technical concepts. The title of this question is Minimum Number of Platforms, and it says that we are given a day worth of scheduled departure and arrival times of trains at one train station. It is further specified that one platform can only accommodate one train from the beginning of the minute it's scheduled to arrive until the end of the minute it's scheduled to depart. We are then being asked to find the minimum number of platforms necessary to accommodate the entire scheduled traffic. It is a hard question because it's not easy to figure out how to extract this minimum number of platforms from a train timetable, and this is further complicated by the fact that the data are spread across two different tables. The key problem is devising a solution that is not only correct, but also efficient and fast, and this is something that the use of cumulative sum can help us achieve. It's always good to start solving an interview question by understanding the provided data. I already mentioned that the data for this question are spread across two tables, but let's see what exactly is happening here. There are two very simple tables, each with only two columns. The first table represents train arrivals, and so we have the ID of each train and the time when it arrives at our station. Analogically, the second table represents train departures, and it has the ID of the train again and the time symbolizing the moment of departure. The question specifies that one platform can only accommodate one train from the beginning of the minute it's scheduled to arrive until the end of the minute it's scheduled to depart, so we can assume that the times in both tables are only hours and minutes, such as we would expect from a standard train timetable. Before we start writing the code, let me quickly show you what approach I will be taking to solve this interview question. There are actually multiple possible approaches, since this is only one day worth of data, we can loop over all the minutes of the day, virtually simulating the entire timeline, for each moment of the day counting the number of platforms needed and in the end selecting the highest value. Another solution could be iterating over the datasets twice, such that for each train we would get a list of other trains that overlap with it, and then use the size of the largest list as the answer. However, both of these approaches are overcomplicated and computationally expensive. In this video, I will show you a much shorter and more efficient solution that can solve this and other similar optimization problems using the cumulative sum. The cumulative sum, sometimes called running total, is a mathematical operation that for a sequence of numbers returns another sequence of the same length in which a value k is the sum of the elements 1 through k from the original sequence. In Python, the cumulative sum is an operation we can apply to a dataset using a function cumsum from the pandas library. To give you an example, I will create an empty data frame, this is what we call a table of data in pandas, and using a function range, I will add one column filled with values from 0 to 9, like this. And now, this will be our original sequence, I can create a new column that will simply return the cumulative sum of the sequence of numbers, and I'm doing this by applying the function cumsum to the original sequence of numbers. And I will call this new column, let's say, cumulative sum. And if I run this, and if I show the entire table now, we can see that we have a new column filled with different values from what we had in the beginning. And this is actually the cumulative sum result. And what we see here in the first row, the number in both columns will always be the same because we have nothing before to, to add to the first number. Uh, but then it becomes interesting because here we have 1, that's because 0 plus 1 is equal 1. Here we have 3 because 0 plus 1 plus 2 is 3. Here we have 6, the same because 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 and so on because here we have 10 because 6 plus 4 is 10, here we have 15 because 10 plus 5 is 15 and so on until the end. And what's also important about this is that the order of the original sequence is very important because it also determines the order in which the sums are calculated in a cumulative sum. So see what happens if I add a new column with the same numbers as before in the original sequence, so from 0 to 9, but in the reversed order. So now they will be ordered from 9 to 0. And I will again apply the cumulative sum, this time again by using the cumsum function and applying this to this uh, new reversed column with re reversed uh, numbers. 
see what happens when I run this code. Now we're interested in these two columns here on the right side. And this is the new sequence of numbers. And we can see that the cumulative sum column returns completely different values, not even the same values, but in the different order, but completely different values because we start summing and adding up these numbers in a different order. So nine, because the first number is nine and then 17, because nine plus eight is 17 and so on. The only common thing between these two tables is the final value in the final row. It's in both cases 45 because the sum of all these values in both of these columns is the same and is 45. And what's more, we can actually include both positive and negative values in our original sequence. So if I create a new sequence with values 2, 3, minus 5, 3, minus 8, minus 2, 7, and apply the cumulative sum to these numbers, see what happens here. We start again with the same value and then we add three, so it becomes five, but then we have value minus five. So when we add minus five, we actually subtract five from this value, so it becomes zero. It's two plus three plus minus five is zero. Uh, then we have the number three, so we add three to what we had before, but then we have minus eight, so this three actually becomes then minus eight. Then we have minus two, so we subtract two and have minus seven. Then in the end, we add seven, so the final number becomes zero. So this cumulative sum actually fluctuates up and down, sometimes increasing, sometimes decreasing. And this becomes really useful in optimization tasks whenever we have to analyze a number that changes in time, be it a number of trains at the station or a number of employees in a company. We can therefore use it to solve this interview question from Goldman Sachs. But before we can actually apply the CAMSUM function to the dataset, we need to create a new column that will be our base sequence for the cumulative sum. So the first step of solving this problem will be data preparation. To be specific, we can start by marking all the arrivals of trains with uh, number one, and then all the departures with number minus one. Since arrivals and departures are still in two different tables, we can append one table to the bottom of the other to create sort of a complete timetable. And at this point, we'll be left with a long list of arrivals and departures of trains, and each row will represent one arrival or departure and will be marked with a value of either one or minus one. Can you already see how these one and minus one values can help us solve this question? Since each value of one denotes one more train coming to the station, and uh, each value of minus one denotes one train less, we can apply the cumulative sum to see how the number of trains at the station changes throughout the day, and then extract the highest number of trains at the station. But before we can apply the CAMSUM function to this column, there is one more issue to take care of. As I've shown you, ordering is very important when using cumulative sum, so let's sort our dataset before moving on. Since we're interested in seeing how the number changes in time, we will need to sort uh, all arrivals and departures chronologically using the time column. And only now will we be able to apply the CAMSUM function. Once again, uh, the cumulative sum will tell us for each timestamp from our table how many trains are at the station at this moment. And from there, extracting the solution becomes trivial. The cumulative sum result basically symbolizes how many platforms are needed at any point in time. This number fluctuates throughout the day as the trains arrive and depart. So to find the uh, minimum number of platforms required for this traffic, we just need to select the maximum value from the cumulative sum. Once we have defined all these high level steps, it is time to turn them into the Python code that will actually return this minimum number of platforms. The first step is to mark arrivals with ones, and we can actually achieve this by taking this uh, data frame or table train arrivals and creating a new column in it. Uh, let's call it mark because we're marking each arrival with a value of one. And this column will need to have a value of one in each row. Uh, but in Python, it's enough to just say that it needs to equal one. And then if we see this updated table train arrivals and run this code, we can see exactly this. Uh, we have now three columns with train ID arrival time, and we'll have new column with all these marks with simply value of one. And uh, next we can do a very similar things uh, with the departures. So it will pretty much be the same. Now we're just taking the data frame train departures. The name of the column that we're creating needs to be the same as one in train arrivals. So here we used mark, so we need to use mark again. And 
this time we're just uh, filling this column with a value of minus one. This is why we're saying that it needs to equal minus one. And if we see this table now, it's very much similar. We see all the departures the same. And now we have the new column mark, this time filled with values minus one as expected. And before we can actually append uh, the two data frames, we need to ensure that in both of them, all the column names are the same. And it's almost the case uh, because uh, both the train arrivals and train departures have the columns train ID and mark, but this is not the case for the columns arrival time and departure time, uh, which have different names. So before moving on, we'll need to rename these two columns so that they have the same name. And since these columns are in two different data frames, we'll need two very similar lines of code to change their names one at a time. To do this, we can apply pandas rename function like this, inside of which we need to specify that renaming specifically columns. And then we can use the key value syntax that you may know from pandas dictionaries, basically saying that the current name arrival time in this table train arrivals should change its name to, let's say, simply time. And when we run this code, we can see this is actually the a train arrivals table because we have these marks uh, with value one and this uh, middle column has changed its name to just time. And then we can use pretty much the same line of code uh, to also do the same thing for train departures. We just need to update these table names. So now we're dealing with the table train departures, again using the rename function saying that we're applying these two columns. And we also need to update the name of the column. So now it will say the departure time and we need to change it to be time. And if we run this code, we can see train departures table and the name of the column has changed. And now we are ready to append one table to another. And this may sound complicated, but it's actually a simple operation of taking all the rows from one data set and adding them at the bottom of another data set. In Python, we can simply do it using an append function like this and specifying the first data frame outside of the function and the second data frame inside as a parameter. So we're saying that we need to append the train departures at the bottom of train arrivals. And since this will result in all the arrivals and departures being in a single data frame, let's call this data frame, for example, timetable. And if we run it, we can see that we have a long data frame, first of all, with all the arrivals, because these are marked with values one, and then with all the departures, because these are uh, marked with value minus one. Right now in our data frame timetable, we first have all the arrivals and only then all the departures. So if we apply the cumulative sum to the mark column right now, it will first simply count all the arriving trains and then gradually go back to zero. And this is not what we want. So the next step is to sort all the events chronologically. And we can do this using the pandas sort values function. This is the function sort values, and we can apply it to this data frame timetable that we have created. And uh, then in the parameters of this function, we need to say that we want to order these values using the time column. So we order by time column. And we also want to say that we order them in the ascending order. And in case of the time, it's equivalent to saying from oldest to latest times or simply chronologically. And if we run this code, we can see that now uh, we have all these events um, ordered. Uh, so we have both arrivals and departures mixed and uh, it goes from 8 a.m. then throughout the entire timeline all the way to the evening at uh, quarter past eight. And here's one more important thing to mention because there may be cases when one train arrives and one train departs at the same time. It happens, for example, here at 10 past eight when the train with ID five arrives at the station, but at the same time, uh, the train with ID two departs from the station. So when this happens, we need to make sure that these events are also ordered correctly because otherwise the event, uh, the result may not be the same, may be different. So in this case, uh, we actually see the hint of what to do in the question because it says that one platform can only accommodate one train from the beginning of the minute it's scheduled to arrive until the end of the minute it's scheduled to depart. So this means that we can imagine the arriving train coming to the station, for example, at 10 past eight and zero seconds, and then the departing train leaving the station at 10 past eight and 59 seconds. So therefore, the rows with arriving trains should always be before 
the roles with departing trains in such situations when the time is the same. So to reflect this, we could modify the sort values function and saying that we're not only ordering the values by time, but by time and mark. But actually in our case, it's not necessary. And that's because earlier we appended the train departures at the bottom of the train arrivals data frame. And this automatically sorted all the arrivals before the departure. So now, whenever we have the case with uh, the time being the same, arrivals are always uh, before departures. And as you can see, uh, this is why the order in which we append the data frames, so that we append the train departures at the bottom of train arrivals, for example, can sometimes be important as well. And moving on with our solution, now we can actually use our main weapon and apply the cumulative sum to the mark column. And we have already seen how to do this, so we can achieve this by creating a new column um, in the timetable or data frame. And let's call it uh, n trains for number of trains. And as you saw before, we can do this by applying the cumsum function to the column we have our values, our original sequence. In our case, it's the column called mark in the table or data frame timetable. And if we see this entire timetable now, we can see that we have a new column with basically the results of the cumulative sum. And this sum increases whenever trains arrive. So for example, from the morning, we can see that it goes up to five trains and then some trains start departing. So uh, this number of trains goes back to zero and after 8.25 uh, a.m. it's back to zero. And then only at um, in the afternoon, the trains start arriving again. So uh, this number of trains increases with each arrival and then some trains are departing. So this number decreases again. And at 3 p.m. Uh, we can see again some trains arriving. So this number increases. Then one train uh, departs. So number decreases again but right away one minute later a train uh, arrives so this number increases again and it keeps fluctuating like this uh, all the way throughout the day and since the, according to the question one platform can accommodate only one train the minimum number of platforms necessary to handle this train traffic will be equal to the highest number of trains uh, being at the station at the same time or in other words to the maximum value in this n trains number of trains column so to extract this, we can simply use a max function uh, like this. So we're simply saying that uh, we want to extract the maximum value from this column and trains from the data frame timetable. And if we run it, it will simply result no longer in a table, but in a single value of five, because in a day there is at most five trains uh, being at the station at the same time and this means that to handle this traffic we need at least five platforms and this is the correct solution to this interview question i hope you enjoyed this explanation and learning how to use the cumulative sum for solving optimization problems in python i showed you one possible solution to this problem but as i mentioned there are also other approaches and solutions so my advice is to practice answering the interview questions by constructing solutions to them, but always try to think of other ways to solve them. Maybe you'll come up with a more efficient or more elaborate approach. Remember also that this question is only an example of a wide range of optimization problems, many of which can be solved in a similar fashion. That's it from me today. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, check out our channel and the playlist with many more data science interview questions. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date when we publish new content. Thanks everyone.